have, right now we have 240 DPC patients in my clinic and I can, I'm only gonna take 300. So once we have 60 more patients, I'm done. So if some fall off, you, I can add more, but it'll be a waiting list after that. Because I, don't, I wanna take really good care of the people that I have and I don't want more than 300 patients. So um, we're also handing out just a flyer about, our, about this class. So um, you can give it to somebody and, cause they can still come in next week or even the week after and they can watch the videos if they've missed a, one or two. And um, we're handing out um, flyers about agrishare.com, which is our webpage that we have, which is food farming and medicine. We're combining food farming and medicine. So it's a webpage. Unfortunately, it got hacked on the 31st of December. I know, it got hacked badly. And we lost our whole forum, which just about broke our hearts. We'd put a lot of work into that. Don had really put a lot of work into it, and we, we just, it's just gone. So we are fixing that. He's already fixed everything so that AgriShare still is up and working and all our stuff's on there, my blogs are. Um, and if you have an email address tonight, we can put you in at the bottom of our page or you can do it when you get home. Oh, I forgot our, ah, dang it. I forgot our, um, well, we'll draw for it tonight and I'll bring it next week. We had a door prize. <laughs> which is an AgriShare t-shirt. So if everybody here tonight, I'm gonna to try to do door prizes, maybe not every single time. Not unless you pay 50 bucks a month. I can't because I don't have enough time. So if, you're ju if you wanna pay the $20 for you know, Valley Care price, then you still have to see your nurse practitioner there in the Wills Valley Clinic. If you want to pay, yes, yep, yep. So, um, yeah, I, I had to clarify that a little bit, but. <laughs> yes, because I can walk in the room, but I can't spend an hour with you like I do on the DPC side. I just don't have, to, if I can't offer that to every single Wills Valley patient or I'd be dying, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so anyway, I did a video this weekend and um, a, a clip, it's on YouTube and it's out in the public. And I looked at it and I thought, oh my God, I'd never seen myself on video. <laughs> I thought, oh, I look so funny. <laughs> anyway, I do my hands funny and my, I have no lip. I have no big top lip. I was going, oh my gosh, I didn't know I looked like that. <laughs> I look like my grandmother. All right. So um, just for a couple of introductions, um, I have, and I'll speak about him a lot. And he's actually here and it's my dad. So my dad's sitting right here. He's 87 years old and he's decided to join us in our class. And I've actually spoken about him in our previous class last year and um, you know about some of the things that we've done through dementia and things like that. And so he knows I'm gonna use him as an example. So I won't go into too much of his health, but you know, he doesn't mind. So, um, cause he's one of our positive things that have happened. So, all right, let me, I have these notes here. I don't go by my notes, but I check my notes to make sure I'm telling you everything I'm supposed to tell you. And I try to stay on track so I don't get kind of crazy. All right, um, so uh, for some of you who, several of you know me and some of you have been in the classes before, but if you haven't, um, I want you to know where, what my experience is. So first of all, my name's Dr. Ko, <laughs> okay? If you don't know my name, I'm Dr. Ko, Franny Ko. So uh, my experience has been, uh, my youngest daughter is, oh my gosh, 35. She was just 35 in December. And I started studying and learning about prevention and nutrition and some of these topics when she was six months old. So I've been doing this for 35 years. I didn't go to medical school though, and, and it kind of sent me to medical school. I didn't go until I was uh, 39, almost 40, my first year. So I was a lot older and actually it worked out really well for me. I got to raise my kids, uh, go to college while they were teenagers and then go to medical school. So, um, so what our classes are, we're gonna be here approximately an hour and I'm gonna, I have to talk fast. I have to get a lot of information in a short period of time. So from seven to 7.30 if you have questions and sometimes I'll answer questions you know, through the class, but you know, I have a lot of information to get in and I don't want to keep you guys. I know it's like dark time and all that and, you know, people need to get home and so forth. So 
You can stay from 7 to 7.30 if you want to ask questions specific about something I've said or whatever. So, um, the, let's see, let me find, uh, let me get here where I started. So, um, tonight, I always do the food first. So, tonight we have, um, did you count how many people? You lost count? So, we have, because you may have to make some more, but we made something called a chaffle. And I don't know if you've heard of a chaffle, but it's actually a cheese waffle. So Hannah's going to bring out, we have a whole tray that we made that are in the oven. She's been here since 2 o'clock today making chaffles. <laughs> they take about three to five, about three minutes to make each one. So, um, but we knew we were going to have a lot of people. And here's Miss Angelina, by the way. So she's the person you're going to pay if you owe anything, okay? And we, she, they've signed in. I don't know if everybody signed in. If you didn't, make sure you do. And uh, she has her computer, and um, so you, you'll be able to, you know, figure that out with her before we go. Did she can't, did we know how, we, a head count? Okay. <laughs> so what we do is when you come in, so we have two things, we have something different every single week, but it's usually just a little treat of something. It's not a meal, okay? But the very last class, we're going to do a potluck. And I'll probably bring the majority of the food, but if you guys want to bring things that, that you've learned about in this class, then you can bring something. And we had a really great time doing this uh, one of the times that we had our, when we had one of our classes. So we'll do that at the 16th class, at the very end. All right. So um, to, chaffles are uh, made with a, you can make them with a regular waffle iron, or you could, I, I bought one for 10 bucks. It's a little round one because then you can make like buns. And a lot of people struggle with bread. They love bread. So what a chaffle is, it's actually half a cup of cheese and um, uh, one egg. And that's it. You mix it up and it makes two chaffles. So you're gonna get a taste of a chaffle. And so the first time I made them, we put uh, pork in it and made it like a little pork, pork barbecue. And, and Tim was like, Tim by the way is my other half. So he's at home, but he cooks. He does most of the cooking at our house because I work and he stays at home. So um, I made him one night and he was kind of like, ah. <laughs> and then I made it and put the pork on it. And I put, uh, we didn't have, we happened to not have any barbecue sauce ready, but we just put, uh, I think I put a little mayo or something. We ate them and they were delicious. They were really good. So I wanted you guys to have a chaffle. So we've, all, we've made 20 something chaffles and I don't know how many people are here right now, but we'll make sure everybody gets a chaffle. The second thing, we always have something to drink. So the second thing we have is, and you can get a little tiny cup first and taste it, but it's called golden milk. So what golden milk is, and I made that for, for my dad last when, uh, Thursday while I was at his house, it's basically um, spices like turmeric, and some of you may know that turmeric is supposed to be anti-inflammatory. It's got turmeric and pepper and cinnamon and ginger and sometimes ashwagandha. Ours has, uh, which is an herb, and ours has, um, we, there's six ingredients in it, and I don't remember. We can read them off of the little, uh, and I'll show you what the little uh, cup looks like. So you put that in either almond milk, coconut milk, uh, whatever, hemp milk, macadamia milk, whatever kind you like that's not regular milk. And um, we put it in a crock pot and we warmed it up. I usually make it one cup at a time. And then I drink it like it, you know, before bed or something. And it's just a nice drink. So a lot of people struggle when they're trying to eat healthy and drink healthy with what to drink. You know, a lot of people in the South like sodas and sweet tea. And those are really bad for us. So, um, so we have golden milk and chaffles tonight, okay? And if you don't, you can try a little sample. We do have bigger cups if, um, uh, um, if you want more, because we got a big a crock pot full. The other good thing about it, we did it on Turkey Trot Day, and we had it at Turkey Trot. And when it was, Turkey Trot was finished, we just took the golden milk, I put it in a jug and put it in the fridge, and then I could just like, um, get a sample, a, a cup of it, and then warm it up real quick and drink it. And it was, uh, it melded really good. The spices were, didn't, they just got into the milk a whole lot better after it sat there for a while. So I thought that worked out really well. All right. So to start with um, what this is all about, um, 
Let's see. All right. Um, where are the beginning of my notes? Here they are. Okay. I wrote some. All right. So, um, so like I said, I've been studying the, all this information since about 1985 for about 35 years. And I'm going to have a lot of, um, on our web page, some of you may not be very computer savvy. Is, is there anybody here who doesn't use a computer at all? Okay. 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 So either we'll help you use it or we'll figure out, you know, we'll make sure um, you have access in another way to some of our resources. Okay. Some of these resources are on the internet. So there's uh, podcasts and there's movies and there's different things like Netflix and stuff like that. So um, if you know somebody who does it, you know, you may be able to get them to help you or whatever to look things up. All right. So um, I may have to rename this class. <laughs> so it's called the keto class, but it's not just about eating and it's not just about the keto diet because it's actually about eating really healthy in other ways. But calling it a nutrition class just sounds kind of boring. You know, it just doesn't sound that great. So I don't know. We may have to come up with a new name somehow. But anyway, so um, it's, I've been studying prevention all these years. And when I went into medical school, we are not taught anything about nutrition. We're not taught anything about prevention. We're not taught anything about what causes, well, we're kind of taught about what causes disease, but we don't get at the root cause most of the time. Somebody comes in, they have a bunch of symptoms and we throw a drug at it. Well, that's not something I ever wanted to do. So I do prescribe medication every single day and I do have to throw drugs sometimes at symptoms to get things calmed down and then we try to figure out how to get at the root cause of something. So um, that's just all, it's not the way most physicians do it. So I'm not, I'm not usually typical. And there's also something else called functional medicine and that's what functional medicine physicians do or functional practitioners. You may hear that term. And basically they try to get at the root cause and you don't even have to be an MD to be a functional uh, practitioner. People, are, nurses can do it, um, nurse practitioners, um, other types of uh, naturopaths and things like that can be a functional medicine practitioner. Um, <clears throat> I do not have a certificate in it, but I've been teaching myself a lot over the years. And eventually I may try to get one. So when I first got into medicine here 12 years ago in uh, Collinsville, my patients started teaching me that diabetes was actually curable. I had no idea, which is crazy. They never taught us that in medical school. They just said, you just got to give people medicine and you just have it the rest of your life. Well, that's not true. You can actually reverse diabetes. So we're going to talk about that. Um, so there's and lots of other um, chronic illnesses are actually reversible and dementia is another one. So we actually want to work with the nursing home here in town. We want to teach families and things like that about some of this information. We actually last summer, um, just to name some of the things we've been able to do with teaching in this class, we had um, last summer and the summer before we had um, a patient who had dementia. She was we just diagnosed her with it and she said it was, I won't tell her name, but she does live here and she said it was okay to use her information. And um, her score on this test that we do out of 30 was a 12, which was really significantly low. She couldn't keep her books anymore. Um, she kept repeating herself, saying lots of things and did not remember um, a lot of information that she should have known. So her husband brought her in and we all cried in the room when we figured out she had dementia. Um, she cried but didn't know why we were crying. She started laughing almost immediately after that because she didn't realize what was going on. Well, she came through our class and in four months her dementia significantly improved so that her score um, moved up to 21 which was out of dementia and mild cognitive impairment. So I'll give you an update as well on her case because we saw her about a month ago and we retested her. So, um, so we'll talk about that. So we really were able to reverse her dementia, which was incredible. I'd never done that before. So I was very excited. And that's when I brought my dad home to Alabama so I could help him. So he was headed in that direction. He wasn't um, there yet. And we'll talk more about that 
some of those uh, issues um, that he had later. So, um, so that's the purpose of our class is to teach people that you can reverse chronic disease and chronic illness and prevent it as well. Keep from getting it in the first place, which is really what we want to do. We also have another person here who's been in our class before and she's allowed me to mention her as well. Um, and that's Miss Wu who's sitting right here in front of us. And um, she had incredibly high blood sugar. She was on 120, it was 120 units of insulin of long acting like Lantus or Levomir, is that correct? Yes, and then you were on the two shots a day, is that right? And then you were on oral medicines as well. Yep, and then oral medicine you've been on as well. And, and her blood sugar was still running 500, four and 500 with all that medicine. So she started the keto diet before she knew that I was teaching it about a month before. And then she found out we were doing it and she goes, oh, I need to come to your class. And you've lost how much weight? 60 pounds. She's on no insulin most of the time now. And um, actually you haven't been, except when she cheats. So um, anyway, and she is in so much better shape you know, over this last year, it's been incredible. So um, it's really, really good information that we're trying to teach and help people. So there's, um, I didn't, like I said, I'm gonna post some of these resources on our webpage um, because there are several things you can watch. One on YouTube, if you have a notebook, I, I gave notebooks out last year, but I don't know how well that went. <laughs> I gave little, little card things. But one thing you can watch on YouTube, which is free, is something called Raw for 30 Days. It may be actually a little bit different name, but if you put that in, it'll pop up. And it was about the uh, raw food diet, and it actually cured di or significantly improved diabetes in every single person who participated in that, uh, in, I think it was in Arizona, or, and that was done maybe 10 years ago. So that's what actually got me on the track to really help people with diabetes. So um, I, don't, I did raw food for a month by myself. Uh, Tim was actually not at home. He was in Tennessee and I thought I was going to die. Oh my God, I was so exhausted. <laughs> so it was a lot of food preparation. It was really hard to do and I don't teach you the raw diet. So don't worry. <laughs> it was just a lot of work. And you had to prepare three days ahead of time for certain recipes and you had to dehydrate a bunch of stuff. And, and it is, uh, you know, if somebody wants to do that kind of work, it actually does work, but you don't have to, okay? <laughs> We're trying to make it easy. So there's actually, everybody's heard of this K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. And that's what I'm really trying to work towards because so many people struggle with understanding what to do so, um, and from our previous classes that we've had, we've got a couple, three people or four people here that have been in our class before. Um, the, uh, we're gonna really work on this class, we're gonna work on the barriers, what people struggle with, you know, to how, how to overcome some of those things, um, quick, fast things, you know, how to, how to make things easier. So we're gonna try to do a lot of that as we go. All right. Um, we're going to have a drawing in some or maybe all of our classes. It may depend. I'm going to try to uh, give away, like tonight's going to be a t-shirt. I'll try to bring some kind of good uh, tasty food product you can take home with you or something like that. So I encourage you to be in class if you can. But like I said, it is going to have, we're going to have videos. So um, you'll be able to uh, look at it in case you can't get here. All right. And um, let's see, I talked about that. And I, I mentioned Don, uh, Don Redman over here. On our web page, um, once we get our, food, our um, forum back up, uh, you'll be able to contact him if you have any questions or can't understand how to use our forum or anything about our web page. And then um, he's also a DPC patient. And uh, Angelina's at the clinic. She's always there. She's a DPC. She's my um, medical assistant and everything. She does everything. So <laughs> she helps keep me lined up. And then Hannah Yaden also works for us at our clinic. And I don't know, she's probably making more chaffles. We have a few more chaffles we need, I think, so everybody can have one and she'll bring one out to you. 
And uh, when you first come in, we're going to try to have tea. And we'll have some, uh, it may be a really strange drink. So if you don't like it, you'll have tea as a backup. <laughs> Just plain old Milo's tea. And I'll teach you um, what kind of sugar you need to put in it. So um, let's see. And everybody got some of our, all of our paperwork. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So the one thing I need you guys to understand is that I, that, and know that I understand is that you're an individual. Everybody's got a different, uh, a different body, a different thing that works for them, different allergies, different um, in, food sensitivities, um, medications, things that do or don't work, things you've tried in your life. Um, we're all different. And I totally get that, that we're all individuals. So, um, and I practice medicine that way, all right? So um, I can't do individual care right here in this room for an hour, but I can over there and I can. Uh, so if you need some individual help in some things, I'm happy to do it. Um, and there's no, so the reason we don't need to call this a keto diet is because there's no single diet that works perfectly for everybody. The reason we call it the keto class and we talk about the keto diet because it's a very good diet to help reverse certain chronic diseases but there's also other ways to do it and um, just like the uh, raw food diet was not keto and it reversed diabetes so um, we can individualize some of those things in some people so but there's I do focus on the keto diet and low carb um, because it is so helpful for so many things and it's kind of you know uh, when we talk about fad diets I don't call any diet a fad diet. I guess there probably are some weird fad diets out there. But most diets are here because we're trying to figure out why we're sick, why we're overweight, and why, how to get healthier. And um, so people have been trying things all along. So um, there are some decent diets out there that are very helpful for people like the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet has done reversed heart disease. So there's other types of diets that actually work. And, um, but there's some, there are some threads of information through all the diets that are really important to know. And we'll talk a lot about that. Okay, um, let's see. So we talk a lot about guidelines and things and I try to stay scientifically based. So I am a physician and this is gonna be on the internet. <laughs> So I can't, you know, and I typically don't say anything really off the wall. I don't tell you to go get crystals and hang them over your head or do these things that, you know, that may work for some people and that's great, but I don't do that kind of thing if, you know, if I don't have some, and there may be some scientific backing to that. I'm not saying there's not, but that's not what I do, okay? So I do try to back up a lot of what we do with research. All right. Um, there's also, if we think, I use some information from the past. I use some information from past diets. We can see that some of our grandparents uh, ate certain foods and some of our grandparents and great grandparents lived to be 100. Um, there may be some people that are living to be 100 now and we'll talk about those folks too. But, but um, so there was good and bad from the past. We're not gonna do any bloodletting. That's probably not good. That's what they used to do. We're um, you know, so there's some things from the past that weren't so good. They didn't wash their hands when they went from woman to woman to woman that had babies and they killed mothers and babies and things when they didn't do that. So we've learned a lot from the past, but there's still some good things we can get from the past that we've forgotten, you know, that actually were helpful and beneficial. So um, we try to be balanced about some of those things. All right. Um, let's see. So some of the things that we run across is that healthy food costs more money. And, um, and that just, we try to help you find ways to do it that's, that are cheaper. I try to give you prices on everything that I do. Like I'll tell you prices on, my, on the golden milk little can that I have. I'll tell you prices as much as I can on, on everything that's, and then I try to find ways to do it um, a lot less expensively. So, um, you know, sometimes we can't, you know, sometimes we can. Some things are just more expensive. So, and I, I try to tell you when it is. Desserts and foods like that that we do that are really healthy, and when they're not really healthy, they still tend to be really expensive to make desserts. It's just expensive to use sugar and all the different ingredients that go in in a lot of foods. So, um, 
I wanted to give you some history about um, the ketogenic diet. And there's actually a movie, so another movie you can watch. It's called Do No Harm. And it, Meryl Streep was in it. It was in the 90s. You may be able to see that on YouTube as well, or you may be able to see it on Amazon Prime, or I don't remember if it's, it may not be on those anymore, because it's an old movie. It's been, it's been about 25 years since that movie came out. The movie producer had a child who had severe seizures. The child, I think, was a boy. In fact, I know he was. His name was Charlie. And there's actually a web page called Charlie Foundation. So this diet, this ketogenic diet, was actually in existence about 100 years ago. And the, they used this diet. It was very high fat. And it was like 70% fat. And then um, they had very little, low, low carbs and add protein. And so we'll talk about those macronutrients in just a minute. So he, um, they had a child, and I think they lived in Colorado or somewhere. I'm gonna kinda tell you about the movie a little bit. But um, this child was having maybe 50 to 100 seizures a day. And they were maybe three, two, three years old. And when a child has seizures like that, they do not develop properly. And they end up becoming mentally handicapped and can't learn and, and progress like they're supposed to. And they had this child in the hospital, giving them all kinds of medicines, trying this, trying that, doing all these things, and nothing was working. The parents wanted to take this baby out of the hospital because they heard about the ketogenic diet, and this diet was at Johns Hopkins. And Johns Hopkins is in Baltimore. And that's where my parents were born. Actually, both of them were born there, so I've known about Johns Hopkins since I was a kid. And it was a really uh, important hospital for uh, uh, probably a century in our country. So anyway, they did this diet there. They actually had to sneak the baby out of the hospital, down the back stairs, and a helicopter had to pick him up, take him to the airport, and get him, because the, the hospital was gonna turn him over to DHR if they tried to take that baby out of the hospital and take him to Johns Hopkins. So when they did, this child was cured of seizures. And so what happens with this diet, the ketogenic diet is not a cure-all, and it's not a cure-all for seizures. But about 65% of the time, if a child stayed on this diet anywhere from two to five years, they could rid themselves of seizures. Another 15, 20% of the time, they would reduce the number of seizures. And maybe 10% or a little bit more, they couldn't do anything. It didn't do ever, you know, it didn't cure the, the children of seizures. So I don't know where the jump was from seizures to nowadays, but they continued to uh, look at this diet, I think, on and off over the years. And they found out that it may benefit people with brain cancer. So there is a physician in University of South Florida. His name is um, Dom Diagostino. It's an Italian name. He actually teaches medical schools, school that kids down there in medical school. He's, a, he's not an MD, but he's a uh, PhD in neuroscience and biology or whatever. I don't remember his exact degree. And you can find him online. He's actually a bodybuilder. He's like oh, <laughs> with his muscles. And so he has taught this diet to, uh, you know, it's, he's kind of helped really bring it out. And now they're looking at it in several places all across the country. Um, at UAB, they're doing studies. They're doing studies up in Pennsylvania, out west, and in different places. So they're looking at it for other things. So there is some benefit, they believe, in cancer. So we also have another person here who has a husband who came to our, our class for a few um, uh, classes last year. Was it last summer? Not this past summer, but the summer before. So a year and a half ago. I keep forgetting what, where we are. This is January. Do what? He had yeah, he had 32 cancers and precancers on his head. And he'd been in the Navy and, you know, he, had, he was balding right here. And he had lots of cancers on his head. And this was like in about May, April or May. And so they gave him some drops called 5-FU, which is 5-fluorouracil. And they're cancer drops. And they said, you need to take this and do it for a month to calm this down so we can do surgery. Because he had so much on his head. They couldn't just take the whole top of his scalp off to get all this cancer off. So he started our class. He, got t he lost 25 pounds, got totally off sugar, um, started eating really, really well. And after um, his uh, four months, it was about four months, they were gone. 
He went back to the surgeon and he could hardly believe it. He could not believe all those cancers were gone. And I saw him, I've been seeing him since then, that's been a year and a half ago, I've seen him two or three, four times, still no cancer. It's all gone. So, and I'm not saying that, yes, his health is better, he's lost the weight, he just feels really, really good. So there's lots of benefits, you know, besides just, uh, and there's other benefits too besides cancer. We've had, we had our diabetes uh, person here and we had somebody with peripheral neuropathy which is re can be really, really painful. And, and you know that because you have a husband who has severe peripheral neuropathy. And we had this person come in and he had severe um, peripheral neuropathy. We didn't just do the keto diet. We did other things, which you know we'll talk about. Um, he had had gastric bypass, so we gave him a vitamin patch and some other things. He was literally in tears every afternoon at about two or three o'clock from the pain in his legs. And after he went through our class, um, he and his wife did, he, his, he just got so much better. It didn't go away, but he definitely improved significantly. So, um, and he'd actually, they'd been vegetarians. He and his wife have been vegetarians. So these are some of the things I want you to, know. this is not like, you know, some, um, what would you say? This is true stories about people here in your own town. <laughs> I just want you to know it's not, you know, uh, some, it's huh? Fake news. Exactly. It's not fake news. It is definitely people here, you know, in your own town. So, um, so that's kind of the kind of a little background about the ketogenic diet. We also uh, Hannah did a whole little uh, page on it on our AgriShare page that I posted about uh, three week, two three weeks ago. So you can read some more about it on there. So on our AgriShare page, I try to post anywhere from two to five times a week, depending on how much time I have. I did not post over the holidays um, any for about 10 days, but um, we started again and we post all kinds of stuff on there. So if you'll put your email, down, your email address down at the bottom of the page, there's a little block that says, and you, you'll, get my, you'll get an email every time I post. And you can click on it and go and read about the stuff that we post. And we do all kinds of stuff. So um, <clears throat> the next thing I wanted to talk to you about, that nutrition is really just, it's, it's about eating food that makes our bodies have enough energy for building and repair. That's what nutrition is, okay? So a lot of what we put in our body does not do what these two things that we need it to do, is feeding us or for building and repair. So, um, and that's where we wanna get a little better. Um, and when I said that the keto needs to change names, it probably does. We want what we call, um, uh, I wrote my word down, hang on. <laughs> I have some of those menopausal moments. We want nutrient dense food. That's what we really, really want. And we wanna understand how to get that. And if you have super high fat, that's still not nutrient dense food. You gotta know how to balance everything. And that's why I'm kind of, keto's really good for short term and maybe for a little bit longer term for some people, but then we gotta kinda back off of it a little bit and then know how to eat the rest of our lives nutrient dense food. And that's what I wanna really, that's why we have some of our patients, our folks who've been here before, hopefully will learn a lot of newer things that I haven't taught before. I'm also doing a class right now myself for, you gotta tell me, are those, you wanna just start passing those out? You can put them on a plate and just give everybody one. Yep, we got, we're doing good, okay. So, um, and I guess for the, um, our golden milk, we can, you guys can just pass the, you know, just bring little cups, do the little ones first, and then if they like it, they can get a bigger cup. <laughs> so I think we have plenty. All right, so I'm gonna let, Normally when you come in in the first beginning of our class, we'll have our food ready. You can just get some and go sit down, okay? Tonight it was a little different because we did some cooking. We aren't gonna typically do any cooking, okay? <laughs> We're just gonna have treats. <laughs> Something to drink and some treats. All right, so um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Okay, we were talking about nutrition and building and repairing and nutrient dense food. So I really wanna teach you guys. Oh, oh, I was talking about, um, I started a class three, about a month, not quite a month ago, right out a month ago, 
for myself. So I've got, I'm actually working with a physician in Oregon. Her name is Maggie Yu. She's um, a, an MD who teaches people how to reverse autoimmune. And some of you may not know, a lot of you may know, I actually have rheumatoid arthritis and I've had it for almost 14 years now. And I wanna reverse it. I, that's all I can do. I cannot make a fist, I can't bend my fingers, I have a lot of pain in my feet, I have pain almost every single day. It's not horrible, I love what I do. <laughs> I forget about it when I walk in my clinic, but I have to take injections for it that suppress my immune system. And I've been doing that about three years. So I want to get off the shots and I want to be really healthy again. I don't know if I'll ever get the function back in my fingers, but um, I am, I'm learning some things through her in the areas of functional medicine that I didn't know. And I want to pass it on to you guys, okay? And that, some of those things are about the thyroid that I'm going to add and about hormones. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> I see some everybody's nodding their heads about those hormones. <laughs> So um, anyway, because we know what hormones do to us and don't do to us. We know what issues we have. All right. Um, and I'm going to, I always attempt, and some of you guys can attest to this, I try to make the education I teach easy to understand. I try, sometimes I do get into some biochemistry and things like that that you don't have to remember. But um, I try to make it so you can understand it. And if you really want to get deep into it, I give you books to go read, you know. So, um, all right, we will repeat some old information, you know, because not all this is new, but we're also going to add some new stuff. The one thing I do want to really add, and I mentioned it a few minutes ago, was discussing the barriers to making changes. That's where a lot of us really struggle. And that's something I have a degree in, actually. I have a, a master's in public health from UAB um, in the uh, area of health behavior. And the one thing I learned in that degree was how hard it was to change people's minds and get them to do different things, including myself. The other thing I want you to know is, if you haven't been in this class, is I struggle just like you guys do. I love ice cream. <laughs> I love Klondikes. <laughs> I haven't eaten one now in a very long time. I found some low carb type ice cream at Publix and at Whole Foods. And um, I have some in the freezer right now. It's only three grams of carbs for like a, you know, a nice size serving. <laughs> so, so I'm finding alternatives to some of those things. But I'm like you guys. I travel, I go to people's houses, and I struggle. So it's not just you. It's all of us. We all struggle. And it's our culture, and it's what's out there and all that. So I'm, I'm going to try to help you guys with some ways to overcome and I can't do it all. You guys have to do the work, but um, I, you know, I try to help you. Did putting them in the oven make them crispier? Okay, so um, typically these can be soft or these can be kind of crispy. And you can put hamburgers in them. You can, do, um, you can make desserts out of them. You can put heavy whipping cream on them. It, so the simple, it is so simple. I'm going to get Hannah to come. Yeah, it's, it's one egg and half a cup of cheese. That's it. Isn't it great? It feels like bread. It kind of works like bread. You can make pancakes out of it and put syrup on it if you have a good, healthy kind of syrup. I can't, do, I can't eat it right now. I may eat one later. I'm starving. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to show you the little waffle iron. and um, to have. A, you can use a bigger iron. I just don't have one. I just bought the little one for, to use at home because you can make two of them up in t 15 minutes. Right, it's a perfect size. Do what now? Yes. That's why you're using cheese and egg instead of wheat, you know. If you add a little bit of cream cheese, yep. and you can even do just the egg whites, uh, and almond flour, uh, vanilla flour, maybe a little bit of your sweetener, mm -hmm. and you have cake. Yes, it's like dessert. So there's a chaffle, there is a chaffle page on Facebook. <laughs> you can put chaffle in and chaffle page comes up and you wouldn't believe all the different recipes people have tried. So you can actually add a little bit of almond flour, coconut flour to it and make it a little bit more cakey. This is just the dirty, simple thing that I wanted to do for you guys just to, you know, see what it tasted like. If you don't like eggs, you may not like this. If you don't like cheese, you know, you may not like it. But um, you can make, make it have a little bit more of the other flowers in it. The carbs go up when you do that. 
But it's just something fast and simple. And it's just, I couldn't believe how tasty it was. It's just the thing bread I've had. Yep. In a long time, right. So that's, why, that's what this class is about. We want to show you some alternatives and some things you can do. The little waffle iron's 10 bucks. I think you can get them down here at Dollar General. If they don't have them here, you can get them at Walmart. I got mine on Amazon. And I will tell you, I buy everything on Amazon because I don't have time to go shopping, okay? <laughs> Which isn't probably good for my community. I do try to shop locally as much as possible, but I do shop on Amazon. All right, so um, she'll bring out the little waffle iron and show you. And then um, she's, they're going to bring you some of the golden milk. And, um, and it's really tasty. We do put some sugar in it. It's not sugar sugar. It is what we call whole earth sweetener. And it's got a little bit of stevia, a little bit of monk fruit, flour, uh, monk fruit and it's got a little bit of erythritol. When you use that, the whole earth, I cannot find it yet at Walmart. You can get the uh, separate ingredients at Walmart and mix it together. You can get it from Amazon. You can get, Starbucks has it now. When, they have their, when you go to Starbucks, they have the little whole earth cough, uh, sweeteners. It doesn't have an aftertaste like stevia does, okay? So you'll get to taste that tonight as well. And we have that every single week in some of our, uh, in our tea. If we're going to have Milo's tea, you're going to have that sweetener in it. So it's so much better. I did stevia for a long time, but I wasn't crazy about stevia. So, um, but this one, it tastes good and it doesn't have that weird aftertaste. The monk fruit really helps. So monk fruit is from a plant and I think it, gr it grows in Asia or you know, China or I don't know exactly where. I, I looked it up once and I don't remember. But it comes from a plant and, it's, um, and so does stevia. It comes from a plant. Monk fruit is only about 75% as sweet as sugar. So it's not as sweet as sugar. Stevia is 200 times sweeter than sugar, okay? So you have to be really careful using stevia if you have pure stevia. And then erythritol is a sugar alcohol, and it adds sweetness too. You have to be careful with erythritol, and I'll remind you of these things later, because it can cause diarrhea. It can, give you, it can make you go to the bathroom if you eat a lot of erythritol. So there's actually erythritol, sorbitol, mannitol, and like... Um, xylitol which is in trident gum you know some of those and some of your sugar-free candy at the grocery store you know your diabetic candies and stuff like that have sugar alcohol if you eat a whole pack you will be in the bathroom <laughs> so you have to be careful so just remember that those little packs now i've eaten i've used as many as six or eight a day and it does not do that to me because it's just a small amount in those packs and we will talk about what um um zero calorie sweeteners like Splenda, NutraSweet, and all those things can do to you. We'll, do, we'll talk about that later. So we'll get into a lot of those things. All right. Um, I think I told, if some of you walked in later, um, I did want to say that our last class will be an extended class and we're going to have a uh, potluck. So we'll have food, we'll have a big meal and we'll kind of celebrate, you know, the end of our, we'll still talk, but we'll have, um, we'll have some of that so some of the new information as well as hormones and thyroid is going to be about the circadian rhythm. Okay, we're going to do a whole class on the circadian rhythm. And uh, we talk about fasting and, and lots of other things in our class. All right, um, so these are some of the things. Let me watch my time. So we still have some time. What I want you guys to think about is what is your goal? What is your reason for being here? Um, and what do you want to get out of this class? So some people may have an issue. Some people may have diabetes. Some people may want to lose weight. Some people may not want to get dementia. Some may, people may have a family member or a parent who has dementia. Um, you know, somebody may have cancer. You want to prevent cancer. You want to, you know, uh, so just think about what's important to you um, so that I can help address it, you know, through some of these classes. I probably will anyway, but but you know, it helps me to know too what you guys really want to get out of our get to get out of our class. Um, the other things that can be helpful to me, um, if you want to talk to me about it, is and we'll talk about some of these things is um, labs, lab work, things like that. If you have some lab work you want me to look at, I can do it um, privately if you don't want to do it in the class, um, and if you've had an exam by a physician recently. So those are kind of important, you know, for you to, to uh, either do or if you have some lab work. And I also recommend certain labs 
if you've got issues. So um, that has to be more of a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in the clinic type thing. But um, we're actually, we do dementia labs. Um, and we do, we're going to start doing some more, uh, we do do a few gut labs and we do thyroid labs and certain things, but we'll be getting a lot deeper into it than most physicians do. So we can do some of those things for you. All right. So what we base, the basic thing I say is that um, health is a three-legged stool. So you have three big aspects or pillars of health to me. And you call, I call it the psychology, nutrition, and movement. So there's also, you can kind of look at it as three macronutrients that we have to deal with in the diet part, the nutrition part, which is fat, carbs, and protein, okay? So just as there's those three macronutrients, there's also a bunch of micronutrients that go along with that, like selenium and iodine and all these different things that we need to get in our bodies. Well, along with the three aspects or the pillars of health, there's all kinds of little things in there that can really make a difference. And um, things like sleep and walking barefoot and breathing and meditation and extra, you know, um, just all kinds of different things that actually can help benefit you along with those three major, what I call the pillars. And that's just me. I don't know if other people use that or not. I know there's, you know, teachers have all kinds of ways of, you know, teaching the things. But those are really important things that, uh, so it's not all about one thing. You can't cure, you can't just take a pill. You can't just cure things by a pill. They're actually trying to come out with an exercise pill. And this is actually true. I just heard it this weekend. There's somebody developing, they've learned that there's some kind of enzyme that we, that affects our muscles, that makes it look like we've exercised. And they can give this, this enzyme, or whatever it's called, this substance to mice. And it looks like they've been on a treadmill, even though they haven't, that they've been sedentary. And I'm going, oh my God. So in some cases for muscular dystrophy or certain things where people can't exercise, that may be a really good thing and it may extend their life. We certainly don't need to use it if we want to be a couch potato. You know? I am not. Well, it's, it hasn't been approved by the FDA yet, but anyway, they're working on it. I'm just like, oh my gosh. I mean, they come out with a pill for everything. So they're actually are coming out, trying to come out with a pill for exercise. <laughs> All right. The good, th the good news is, before we leave tonight, there are people, there, I saw an 85-year-old daddy <laughs> on PBS about over the weekend, last week, or this while I was on vacation, who was running, he's doing triathlons. He was doing triathlons. He was run. I don't know if he ran a marathon. I guess he did. But anyway, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh. And of course, he's one of the top in the world for his age because he's doing triathlons. You're never too old to start, okay? You're never too old to get better. You're never too old to improve your situation. Never. There was a, there's another lady I just so admire, this little black lady. She started, and I'm, I just turned 59, so I'm only a year older than when she started. She was 58. She started bodybuilding, and now she's 81. And you can go look her up. You can put 81-year-old uh, bodybuilder, and she'll pop right up. And, oh, my gosh, you've, have you seen her? From here up, she looks 81. From here down, she looks 25. I'm going, oh my gosh, it was the weirdest looking thing you've seen. But oh my gosh, is she in shape? And she teaches everybody. She teaches classes and she's 81 years old and she looks incredible. Her sister, and she started, her sister was a little bit younger, but unfortunately her sister got breast cancer and passed away. But she kept on, she kept working. She even got depressed and didn't want to do it after her sister died. But she said, no, I got to get myself up and I got to do this. And she's still doing it. And she looks incredible. So you're never too old. <laughs> you're never too, you know, you can do it. All right. So um, let's see. I think that's everything. I think I've covered. Let me make sure. Okay. Um, I will talk to you about a few resources real quick. And then I'm going to let you guys ask questions. So um, I'm going to talk to you about how this is di different from paleo and Atkins and those types of things. Um, but there's some resources you can look at. 
So doctor, you may have seen it on Facebook, but there's a guy named Dr. Eric Berg. And he's on, I mean, he's constantly on Facebook. And he's got some really good information. I think he, I haven't, I sat and only watched a few of his first videos and they were right on. They were spot on and he teaches uh, some of the same things I teach. So, but I think he tries to sell you things. I don't know for sure, but I think he's always trying to sell you something. I am not trying to sell you anything, I promise. <laughs> so, um, my drugs over there are almost free. <laughs> so I'm not trying to sell you anything. But that doesn't mean what he's teaching. I mean, he's trying to do it for a living. I, I have my clinic. I'm not trying to do this for a living. So, um, and then another guy that I've watched for many, many years, his name is Dr. Joseph Mercola. And some of the information I teach you is out of a, a book, a couple of books that he's written. And he wrote a book called Fat for Fuel. And he also has a cookbook. Don't buy the cookbook. I have it. You can borrow it from me. You can get it and look at it. It's not worth buying. It's got a lot of um, recipes done by a chef. So it's like really, it's not regular food. <laughs> it's beautiful and it looks, it probably tastes great, but don't get the cookbook. <laughs> so another one I mentioned already was Dom D'Agostino. He's got a web page so you can learn about stuff he teaches. Um, there's a couple of books if you'd like to read a lot. One about cancer is called Tripping Over the Truth. And it was excellent. It's about the metabolic theory of cancer. And then there's another book called The Metabolic Theory of Cancer. You may not want to get that one. It's about this thick and it's dense and I even have a hard time reading it and I've been to medical school. But Tripping Over the Truth is excellent. It's for a lay person if, you want, if you're worried about cancer and you want to prevent cancer. Um, that's a really, really good book. And I will give you more and more resources as we go through each class. I'll give you web pages and stuff like that. All right, Whew. I'm done. <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions? Um, do you have any comments? What do you think about the, uh, well, we've heard some comments on the chaffle. What do you think about the, um, and I want to get our little container. Go ask Hannah if I can have the little container of um, golden milk powder so I can show it to them. No, so I'm going to show you the container I buy. Now this container, it was $16.95 on Amazon. I get um, Amazon, uh, what is that? Uh, no, uh, subscribe and save, where you get like 5% to 15% off the more you buy. So I tend to pay less for all my supplements and all that stuff because I try to order stuff for the clinic. But I, Walmart, yes, and there's different, Yeah, there's different flavors of it too. This is one. My dad has another at his house that we it had like, it had what, eight ingredients? It had a couple more than what this one has. So this one has ginger, cinnamon, turmeric, curcumin, black pepper, and cardamom. His had ashwagandha and, because I had bought a couple of them to try. And I like, it doesn't matter to me. So it's just a gold powder and it's anti-inflammatory. So what we want to do in most, in all of our bodies is we want to reduce inflammation. And I teach you what causes the inflammation in the first place, and I give you ways to reduce it. And spices have been one of those ways over many centuries. They've used these spices in India, in, um, all in many countries across the earth. And India has a lot less arthritis um, than they do here in the United States. They're very low on arthritis because they've always used a lot of um, spice, cur um, uh, curries and all those. They have hundreds of different types of curries over there and they use it from the time they're really small. Sort of like in Mexico and in South America, they use a lot of pepper and hotness. And those are actually anti-inflammatory, by the way. So, um, but these spices are really, really good. So what we're trying to do is introduce just different ways to taste good, you know, if you like it. I grew up on, my mom used curry uh, fairly frequently, so I don't mind spice. Some people who've never had this kind of spice don't like it. Mm -hmm. Did you try it? And it was like, yes. Right. And what we need to do is help you with acid reflux and get rid of that, and then you may be able to do it. Yeah. And they both failed. Yeah. And now I have this Okay. You just have to try it. If you use it in small amounts, it may not bother you at all. 
Yeah. So, like I said, you ha just have to try it. If you have it in something like, it, we only put eight little tiny, it has a little bitty tiny, um, so it wasn't real strong. That's how big the little measuring cup is. Now my dad's little cup was a lot bigger than that. So, um, and I don't mind it strong. So you could, you know, do it weak and then you could add, you know, go up on it and see. Yeah. Did you just drink some? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, you have to do what your body will tolerate. We used uh, one coconut and one almond. I don't typically like to drink almond milk. It doesn't have, to me, a very good flavor. I've used it for years on, when I used to eat cereal, I don't eat cereal anymore, but I've used it on um, things like that. But I will, um, I'll use it in recipes. Um, I, use, I like coconut milk better. It's a little, that's just a little bit... I don't know, I just don't care for the almond milk as much, especially straight up. But I don't drink those milks straight up. I just use them in recipes. I have. I used to only make it fresh because I couldn't afford to do it any other way when my kids were at home. And I have a, a, a Vitamix blender and I always made it like that. So I work too much now. <laughs> so I don't make it anymore. I still have a big bag of almonds down in the bottom of my freezer I was supposed to use for it like uh, they're probably five years old, but I buy it now. But yes, it is different when you make it fresh. The other thing is when you have fresh almonds, I used 32 almonds. It was, there's 32 almonds in a cup. When they put that, make that almond milk, there's a whole lot less almonds in the same cup. They use, put a lot more water in it. You know, so when you make it yourself, it's a whole lot richer and you get a lot of benefit from it. Like calcium, you know. You do have to be careful eating almonds because they're hard on the gut, especially if they haven't been soaked. So um, they tend to be a little bit harder to digest than some of the other nuts. But almond milk is fine. And I have a milk bag, the whole thing. You know, I've got a cotton milk bag at home and I, can, I pour it. I've made it here since I've been in Collinsville, but I haven't made it in a while probably four or five years. Do you make it? Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes. He can. So what I tell people when they're, my dad's been on Coumadin for many, many years and he started on this diet a year ago and he was eating a ton of greens. Well, he just got off Coumadin but we had to go up on his, cum on his uh, Coumadin uh, because his INR went up. Or, well, it went down when he started eating a lot of greens. So, so many doctors will tell you, don't eat green. Don't eat anything green. Well, that's horrible because you need those macronutrients. You need that food to be healthy. And um, so I just adjust the Coumadin level and I teach people, eat it consistently every day a certain amount and then you can still do it and be on Coumadin. It won't mess him up on Xarelto. No, Coumadin it will, but not Xarelto. You don't have to worry about any diet on Xarelto or any of those, uh, um, uh, I can't even think, Pradaxa is one, and he started on the other one. I can't even think of it at the moment. Anyway, one of those menopausal moments. <laughs> the words go out of my head. Somebody else had a question. Yes, so I gave you those so you'd have something on the first night. <laughs> but I'm going to go over that whole sheet back in front really well with you. But cheese food product is trash. That's Cheese Whiz, Velveeta, single wrapped um, Borden cheese, single wrapped American, any American cheese. All that is is oil made into cheese. Those are trash. Huh? Protein. Yes. Yeah, yep. My dad had thought he was doing good. I went into his house and he had some off-brand of Velveeta and I threw the whole thing in the trash. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't let him have it. I said, nope, you can't have this. You got to eat real cheese. Uh, we had Colby, I think Colby Jack. Yep, we did it through, a, we had a food processor. We did it earlier. You can use several kinds and that's a good question. You can use mozzarella, you can use, um, you can use cheddar and some other cheeses. So Colby Jack is a little softer, you know, not quite as hard as like cheddar cheese, but people have used several types of cheese. So, um, 
Yes, absolutely, you're right. So I tell people, shred it yourself. Buy real cheese and shred it yourself because they put powders on that cheese to keep it, to help it separate. Um, ask Hannah to bring the little chaffle maker out so we can look at it. Did everybody get one? Oh, um, Rebel. Rebel, that's it. It is. So um, I don't do it. I did, um, I did do a no-no at Christmas. I drank eggnog because I love eggnog. But we actually put an eggnog recipe on our page that is keto or that's, you know, high fat and low carb. So here's the little, oh, it's warm. <laughs> so here's the little uh, waffle maker. It's real cute. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So this is, it's, you know, just real cute, little and small. And um, so it literally, you take one egg and one half cup of cheese and it makes two chaffles. So you can put too much on here and it spills over. So, but you put about half the mixture on here and cook it for three minutes and then the other half. Do what? Yes, it was three. It is. So not, yeah, three tablespoons works perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> or you can get a real regular waffle maker and just, you know, you don't have to fill the whole thing up. Um, but it's just a great way to have something soft and to make something similar to bread. You can make them crunchy too if you want, but they're... Um, is there a way to store those and put them back in the oven or something? I've never, uh, I haven't made them enough, but I'm sure you can. You can probably put them in a baggie and just take them out the next day. Even, they may store for several days. You know, most stuff keeps for three to five days with no problem. Just smell it, you know, after, after three or five days, just smell it. Absolutely. Yes, you could make several. I am, I mean, cheese and eggs keep after they're cooked. You know, I can't, I can't imagine why it wouldn't keep. Oh yeah, absolutely, good idea, yep. If you like them crispy, you can have them a little crispier, and the cheese may make a difference too. I don't know about how crispy they are. Um, yeah, you can stick them in the freezer. That'd probably be easy too. My old students. <laughs> They're my students, and I am. Um, so we talk about cholesterol. That's actually a whole topic. So we talk about, um, it's actually okay, but we do talk about cholesterol. That's a whole topic. So we'll get to that probably fairly quickly because the first few weeks we talk mostly about diet. Then we really get into some of the other issues about our bodies. I even teach you a little exercise class and we have something called the Simple Six, which my old students don't know about. So, <laughs> so we have, you know, I'm really trying to find things that are easy to do and that, that work really well. But um, yes, we will definitely get on that topic. And that'll be fair. Huh? As long as it's okay. That's okay. Yes. Mine's right yes, it is. It is. All right. So we'll talk about that. Um, yes. Yes, and so <laughs> we're going to talk about that some too, but you have to be careful about what's in there. So I actually brought to our previous classes, and you ladies will remember, I brought the um, keto cocoa, the chocolate. Well, come to find out, it, it made my belly hurt every time I drank it. I'm going, what is making my stomach hurt? And it actually, what they do to get um, fat into a powder form, fat is not a powder. It is not a powder. They spray it into droplets in the air and then they spray a cornstarch type product on it. And then it makes it into a powder. And that's what was hurting my belly. So I, you know, if they say there's um, medium chain triglycerides in those and things like that, that's the problem. So I had to tell all my group, you can't have this anymore. Because it's, it was, it was tasty. But it's actually harmful, it can be harmful. Anything, the problem is anything processed is there's always something they do to it, unfortunately, that isn't as good for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And I have to say, I eat it some because I eat the Slim Fast. They have those Slim Fast keto uh, uh, peanut butter cups. And I took those down to my grandkids because they love candy. So I gave them all, you know, occasionally, but not all the time. We don't want to just, you know. Yeah, it's the fat bombs. And I looked on it, and I think it's okay, but I'm not positive. I haven't seen the Slim Fast drink for the keto drink. Yeah. I'd have to look at it and look at the ingredients. Knowing the ingredients is really important. So I'm trying to get, that's what my dad and I talked about. I said, even on like uh, bone broth and chicken broth, you got to look at the ingredients. Because just plain chicken broth at, uh, we'll talk about bone broth in one of our classes, but they'll have sugar in it and they'll have uh, preservatives and they'll have all this stuff in it. You know, bone broth does not have all that. So you have to be careful about processed foods. And even my ice cream. We were looking on it, and Holly, my daughter, says, Mom, this has unhealthy oil in it, and it did. I think it had a little sunflower oil or something in the, in the chocolate around. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I can't eat those very often. So you just have to be really, really careful. But every now and then, you know, um, you just don't want to do it every day. Okay? Those are really good questions. Anybody else? All right. So just so you know the process, I need everybody to talk to Angelina, if, if we need to talk to Angelina. We have to be out of here by 7.30 because we're keeping, Jennifer is actually supposed to participate in our class. She may not been, have been able to tonight, and her sister. But she's the librarian, so she'll make sure that she locks up and everything. But we don't want her to have to get home too late either. So, um, so we're doing good tonight. It's only 10 after. But if you guys have questions between now and next week, just write them down and, um, and we'll try to address them.